He saw something on the course he'll never forget. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's, well, no one knows. Unidentified flying objects. And clues are emerging in the sky. And just what, if anything, is living in Scotland's famed Loch Ness? This week, the FBI released a big Loch Ness night. Mythical, legendary, and elusive chupacabra. I kid you not, Lemur. Guys, welcome back to Unknown Territory. This is the man they call Dave, and I am here in the studio with the one, the only, KVK. And we're going to do a little bit of a mini-sode here today because we feel bad. Yes, Honestly, I feel bad. We haven't put out anything in over a month and a half, and you guys deserve something. You definitely deserve something. I gotta tell you, Dave, we I am totally apologetic right now. It's been a while since you and I have been together here in the Unknown Territory studio. And I think we owe it to not only ourselves, but to the fans out there that we start delivering a little bit more content on a regular basis. And I think you agree with me on this one. I do, but then again, KVK, it was not your fault. It wasn't mine. You know, I sprained my wrist. I had to move. Got now a lot I finally of things got of everything going in the on. Way, yeah, like everything gets in the yeah. way. So basically, this is going to be an unknown territory MS, which I'm going to call a mini sode. Last about 20 to 30 minutes. Now, what KVK has planned is he's going to run off a bunch of topics to me. Ignore my dog in the background, I'm sorry. He's going to run off a bunch of topics rapid fire to me, and we're going to discuss them. Hopefully you guys would enjoy, because most of it has to do with what you've all been waiting for. Ancient aliens. Yes, we have been promising this for quite some time. You have the floor, my friend. I thought that tonight, Dave, I think it would be a little bit more interesting for not only you, but also your fans, that we just randomly talk about topics that are affiliated with this topic, in that in general, and you get your perspective on it along with mine and we come to some sort of either conclusion or disagreement or so on and so forth and if you guys while you're watching this you want to leave comments in the bottom by all means we're happy to listen to what you guys have to say but without further ado we're gonna get started are you ready dave all right i'm good to go for the first part of the show all right i think the first thing that we're going to talk about is 
The Temple Mount. The in Temple Jerusalem. Mount in Jerusalem. All right. Why don't you hit it off right off the bat? Okay. I thought this was an interesting topic to talk about when it comes to Dave because Dave being more in tune when it comes to the Bible in in a sense – that you would understand this a little bit more than most people, mm -hmm. okay? Not to say that anybody out there doesn't understand Bible studies or this and so forth, but Dave, as you as you well know, and you have professed that you're an ordained minister, so you understand I am, this. I am a chaplain, okay. yes. So, I guess we're not, not going to waste any time in boring you about what the Temple Mount is and what it means and this and so forth. Well, blah, blah, blah. why don't you explain it to the listeners? The listeners is are the people that I want this information to get out to, especially if we're speaking about ancient alien theory. Okay. Well, basically what Temple Mount is, is the location of the first Jewish temple, which was erected by King Solomon a long, long time ago. And now, didn't King Solomon also have a ring, a staff, and a crown, and was able yes. to control demons? Yes. He had what, what we would refer to as the Star of David today, he had a magical ring that was given to him that had the seal of Solomon on it. And with this ring, he was able to control the demons. And what the demons the did for him... 52 demons? Yes. And what he what the demons would do for King Solomon is that they would help him build his temple. Build the temple, yes. Okay? Because if anybody has seen depictions of the temple itself in, in uh, Renaissance art or this and so forth... It was a pretty big temple and for its time. And even if you go to Temple Mount today, even the the western wall and some of the temple that still exists in the wall structure, that's quite a big quite a big structure there, okay? It's it's not something that oh, you normally so. would it's not something you would normally build for people at the time. It's you, kinda around that time of like ziggurats. Yeah, exactly. And the thing about this is that this this area in and of itself is registered as a very sacred place, not mm -hmm. only for, for Jews, but also for Muslims and also Christians. In fact, today there's the Dome of the Rock that exists on top of the, of the Temple Mount, and that entire area in and of itself has many different affiliations when it comes to religions, okay? We all, we all are familiar with the story of uh, Abraham and Isaac and being sacrificed in Genesis, that's what is sacred to both Christians and Jews. Mm -hmm. And also, this is also the place in Muslim tradition where Muhammad uh, ascended into heaven to meet Allah. Okay? But the thing that's interesting about this place in general is the whole concept of the Temple Mount itself is that the temple must be erected in a specific area and raised in a, in, in a specific direction, yep. as far as I know. Absolutely. Each... Angle has to be put north, east, south, west mm -hmm. in a certain position. Absolutely. But so I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering what the hell does this have to do with ancient aliens? Well, for anybody who is studying ancient aliens and ancient alien theory, oh, pardon you. Excuse me. Somebody um, had a little too much soda today. Anybody who studies ancient alien theory will understand that the Temple Mount concept in that of itself is that this is the place where god was supposedly resident okay and this is where people flocked to, to worship mm -hmm. so the question is is that there was some sort of power that was drawing these people to this area to this specific area okay there's some sort of energy source that exists in this area that would make people like want that would make people want to come yeah okay so uh, the general basis around that is that principle, okay? Now, at this point, I just wanted to get your perspective on this and see how you feel about this, Dave. I find it interesting, but I don't find it 100% credible. True. And you, in I don't... Basically, what I would say is I do not see the Temple Mount really having anything to do with the ancient alien theory. There are so many other uh, places that have much more credibility. Probably more than more, Temple Mount. I would say more suitable to that would be, bore, uh, would be on the border of uh, Lebanon 
in Syria, which is Baalbek. Mm-hmm. And we all know about that, okay? Well, they might not. It has one, this is another temple complex that's just like Temple Mount. And it was sacked by the Romans and the Greeks at a point in time where they built... Uh, Roman well, ma- make sure you let them know exactly where this is because you said that so quickly. This is so this, that they listeners can look it up this, themselves and create their own conclusions. This site itself is located on the borders of Le- Lebanon and Syria, so it basically straddles. And it's called what? It's called Baalbek. You go on Google Earth. B a l b e b a k b a l l. B A A L E K. Okay. You look up on Google Earth, you just type it in, it will literally take you directly to the site. Okay? It's from an aerial view, it is twice as big as Temple Mount. And the stones that are used there are not from the region. No. Not only are they not from the region, but you're talking about stones that weigh anywhere in an excess of 500 tons. Mm hmm. Okay. I some, know what I know. Some of them even about. some of them even more. You're talking about a thousand tons. Okay. Three of these stones in the base of now, the mount are actually a thousand pounds a piece, which means that these three stones would literally have to be carved and then levitated or lifted into place. I don't know about oh, you, but that. I don't know anybody of that time. And you're talking about a structure that's nine thousand estimated to be nine thousand years old. Stonehenge. Oh yeah. Think about it. You're talking about lifting stone on top of stone. No, that's I, over a thousand tons. Okay, there's something that's askew here. Now we're only gonna have because this is a mini sode. We're only gonna have one break. But before we go into the break, I do want to say. The KVK is a card-carrying member of the Ancient Astronaut Theory. Am I'm I correct? damn proud of it, too. I Absolutely. am not. I am just the man they call Dave. I take in all ideas. I listen to everything. So this guy knows what he's talking about as far as Ancient Astronaut Theory. If you guys believe it, leave your comments below. We're going to be going into the one and only break for this tiny little mini show because we're hitting about the 12 minute mark. So we'll be right back at you. Thank you. 
Hey guys, and we're back in unknown territory. This is the man that called Dave here with KVK. What's He's up, got guys? One or two other things he wants to bring up with me before this mini show ends. Because we're about right at the 15 minute mark, and the mini shows are about a half an hour each. So, hit me. All right, Dave, we're going to talk about the subject that intrigues me most about not only ancient aliens, but also the UFO phenomenon in and of itself. And now we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about alien abduction. Really? Okay, alien abduction. You want to go that route? Yes, because it's one of these things that it cannot be ignored anymore. Okay. It's a pain in the ass, okay? As many times as people are recording that they've been taken by aliens, okay? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. There's probably a lot of people out there that do it just to get their name in the newspaper and get a little attention, but there's... There are perfectly normal people that come from all different walks of life that have these dramatic things happen to them, and... Okay, well, name me four people. Now, I'm holding up my hand to him, too, right now in the studio. Hold me. Give me four people, and couples are included as double. Give me four people that have been abducted with a true story. Well, you can always, you know, the first one that always comes to mind is Betty and Barney Hill. Okay. I was this thinking is, of that, too. This is nine. Okay, so that counts as two yep. people. You got Travis Walton. Okay, that's three. You got Betty Andreasen. Okay, that's four. And let's see. Let's see. Famous Tim Carlsberg. Okay, that's five. Give me the one that's notorious for the book Communion. Oh, that's Phil Stryber. Stryber Street. Nope, not Phil. Nope. His last name is like... Stryber. Stryber. Yes. yes. Whitley. William. Whitley. Whitley. Whitley, Str- Whitley Stryber. Stryber, yes. Yes. Okay, so you've got six, so go on. You know your stuff, This then. is This is an interesting topic for me because it's just... It's just when you first hear about it. For I've been fascinated since I was a little kid when it came to this because it was just so bizarre and so out there that it had to be something that was made up. But the more and more that you research it, and the more and more you see people's testimony and actual eyewitness accounts of what happened to them, mm-hmm. they are sincere when this happened to them. Now, what does this have to? How does this? How does alien abduction connect to the ancient alien theory? The reason why it connects to ancient alien theory That's is, what because, I want to know. is because alien abduction has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Well, there is many. Humanity has only been around for what, 3,200 years? Or so they say. Or so they say, 3,200 years. Or so they say. You've got to take into account that we are finding more with scientific evidence that we have a lot more primitive human societies that exist. In a remote past, we're not talking about anatomically normal humans. We're talking about Neanderthals, Cro-Magnum, things of that nature. Mm-hmm. you got to think to yourself along the line of the evolutionary path that there has to be some sort of missing link here. And science... Well, wouldn't you call the missing link Bigfoot? Sasquatch? There could be a part of that that's actually a part uh, of JT that. JT and I did discuss in a short term on an episode that was a couple of months back about Bigfoot... About being the missing link. Yeah, I believe you and I did an episode about that too, and how it, it tied into the extraterrestrial. We did way back in the yes. day. Yes, way back in unknown territory. I think you were the first one on this show, KBK. I think you were the very mm-hmm. first one on, and we talked about the Bigfoot and alien connection. And I made the statement that the Bigfoot creature, in that of itself, was the first of the entire. Hum- and the, you brought up the Nephilim. I try. I remember you brought up the Nephilim. Well, yes, that too. That being in folklore and legend, this yeah. and so forth. But I also made the statement that the Bigfoot creature in and of itself was the very first archetype when it came to the original hominid creatures on this planet. And the alien creatures actually saw them. So, in technically speaking, if it wasn't for alien intervention, this planet would have been overrun by Bigfoots. It's basically what I was saying. So they came to this planet, as much as this is to your chagrin, because I know how much you love Bigfoot, but no, I know how hey, much, hey, but I hey, also know how much I you have, like alternative opinions I on do. this as well. I have 
an open mind, so I'm willing to hear you out. So I, I have look, an open mind. So I look. So you look at it from the perspective of if extraterrestrial beings did come to this planet and they were looking to advance a, a species that's on this planet, you would think that the Bigfoot creature would be like the most advanced of it. But you're talking about brute humanoids, hairy, brutish people. So they decided to put their genetic marker on it, and through you're talking thousands of years of testing again and again and again and isolation mm -hmm. by the way because you're talking about pockets of different types of people being placed all over the world yes you, you know neanderthals are not found in specific parts of asia you're mostly found in europe you'll find different parts of the human genome in different areas mm -hmm. so what that says to me is that these humanoid creatures are placed in strategic areas because they're basically a petri dish and the extraterrestrials are tweaking the genetic code to finally get to the perfect being that they want in their image. Okay? That's the basis of where that comes from. But as far as going back into the, in the abduction point, okay? Yeah, yeah let's that's, go back. Let's, let's, let's trick, yeah. trap it back to the that's abduction pretty much, thing. That's pretty much where that comes from. In terms of today, you're talking about tweaking the the human genetic code into being something more advanced you could see a lot more people becoming more advanced later during the days you know what i'm saying they're becoming more intelligent. I do. they're becoming more intelligent they're becoming more physically inapt okay we're getting into an age where computers are starting to take over you know and it's not anything of any kind of strange uh strangety to them and the one thing that seems to be going on here is with a lot of abductees, they're talking about hybrids now. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is a common thread in alien abduction lore, is that they're con they're, when they're taken aboard the ship, you know, you hear the same old story, they're placed on a table, this is done to them, this is done to them, this is over. But there's so a they would, they would uh, essentially sexually assault yep. males and females sperm is for being, sperm yep. or ovaries Over, oh, uh, eggs. eggs are taken sperm is taken and whatever is being done with this sperm and egg is being taken and genetically altered with their dna mm -hmm. that's the best way that we to can describe it a and they see this hybrid yeah this cross between the alien creature and i've themselves. seen things about that yeah okay and now the abductees, humans with bigger eyes, yep. skinnier bodies. And now they're getting to the point a lot more recently in times when it comes to modern day abductees that the, that the human alien hybrids are becoming more human like, but yet have more alien, um, the best of ways, intellectual thought going with them. But the thing is with that is where's the proof? When Where's it comes to this topic, okay, this is what I get with a lot of people. And, it, and it's the same thing with any kind of abduction. I'm only saying this to be a conscientious person who and I believes in, maybe disbelieve, mm -hmm. but this is more for the listeners than anything. Absolutely. So, as you being a pretty much goddamn expert, pardon my French, sorry for all you Christians out there, I'm sorry. For being a pretty much expert on this subject, right. you know you know what you're talking about. Where's the proof, though, of this? At the, at the end of the day, when it comes to this subject, especially when it comes to edit, uh, alien abduction, is that most of the information is done through hypnosis. And when... Hypnosis? Hypnosis, yes. And when this is done with these people, it's called hypnotic regression. Mm -hmm. You know, you do, and it's no different. Oh, than, that I've heard of. And it's no, and that's no different than anything. I used to live down the street from it. Yeah, from a hypnotist. That's no different than anything that you never would find, went to one. That you would find with a regular psychiatrist. You know, the people who have repressed memories or have you know murders that need to be solved. There might be uh, memories that are locked in your brain that you just don't want to talk about. Yeah. But the problem, oh, I know there are plenty of memories right. in my head I don't want to think about. But the problem with this subject is that hypnotic regression can be manipulated. It can be um, problematic. People make up things that they don't really that didn't really happen. Okay, but the only way I could see if somebody was truly hypnotized that their brain could be manipulated 
is by the person doing it. True. And that's the statement that I was going to make next, is that you have to have somebody who is completely professional in this. But you're also talking about, you're talking about somebody who's an amateur. Most people who do this kind of research and most people that do alien abduction regression, they're not licensed hypnotists or psychologists. Mm -hmm. So they're taking it based on face value. But the, but the problem is, is that you're talking about people who do not communicate with each other, have no idea about anybody else's testimony, and they are saying the exact same thing in exactly the same order to the same person. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but in any court of law, if somebody tells you the exact same thing in the exact same way, that's evidence that would hold up. I would think so, yeah. Even if it's speculatory, which I'm telling you right now is that this kind of research is out the window because you're talking about hypnotic regression. Yep. But at the same time, you can't discredit that these people are having some sort of trauma. These people are having their lives altered. Some of them don't even want to go to sleep at night. Half the time, there, there are cases where abductees... They're afraid of going to they sleep. Will have, there will be cases of abductees that will have the lights on. In their yeah. house, the they're television. afraid of sleeping. They don't. They don't want. The, the, they're the, afraid of what will come into their yeah. house in the middle of the night. Have paranoia even if going on. Even if their doors are all locked, they just still yep. some have a way. They still somehow have a way to get in. So that's a good Whitley Strieber thing. Yeah, or Strieber, depending he, on how his, you pronounce his last name. His case was he didn't even know that he was a but was, for some reason. That's he, in my area, upstate yeah. New York. Oh, yeah. That scares the heck out of me. In his case alone, he would find himself locking the doors, and sometimes he would think that he had a ten, he had an ADD, and he would go back and do it again yeah. because he was just had this overwhelming fear of something happening to his family, and he couldn't figure out why. So why in the world would you be perfectly fine one minute, and then all of a sudden you have these feelings? Something's not right here, okay? And so... Back to what, it, back to the original notion when it comes to the ancient alien theory is that still this has been yeah, we going. We got about ten minutes left, I'd say, yeah. for the mini so. But this has been going, going. But this has been going on for for millennia. Okay, the basic premise of what we look at is that the the human genome has been manipulated and tampered with since the dawn of the evolution of this creature on this planet. Okay, now it may be Bigfoot. It might be just you know regular apes evolving into human beings. We don't know that. There's no definitive proof, okay? But from what we're trying to gather and what we're trying to understand is that this could be the missing link. And if this is the missing link, it has been a long so term... So the aliens, essentially, would be the missing link, not yes. Bigfoot. Yes. Bigfoot is part of the link, but it's not the missing link. The missing link here is... Well, in a, anytime is, anybody thinks of missing link, they think of Sasquatch. Right. But so the in, a, ancient aliens are essentially, in your term, the missing link in the genome yep. for humans. They're the how? They're the missing link because without that extraterrestrial intervention, evolution wouldn't part wouldn't take place as we know it today. There's well, just, they did say that there was a huge leap technologically wise, technologically is, wise, for humans. Then all of a sudden we went from, what was it, the Bronze Age, the Silver Age, you have the to, Iron Age. You have to look at it from that perspective. Then all, is that, next thing we know, we're flying in the sky yeah. and we're developing lasers. How You're come all of this stuff is happening so quickly? We went, we went essentially from horse and buggy the cars. to the moon. Hmm? Yeah, to the moon. In less than 150 years. Yep. Now, what propelled that? How is this possible? Was it just brilliant minds that evolved? Which most, which a lot was of, their intervention? Yes, and I'll agree with that. There's a lot of people that will say, oh, you're discounting human ingenuity. I'm not discounting human ingenuity, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from a perspective that as time goes on, there's gonna if you're going to have that kind of an increase in intelligence... And you look back in time and there isn't an increase in intelligence, there's something going on here. Because if you're going to go with the idea of an evolutionary path being a slow process that takes its time, why don't we see the dolphins building cars? Mm -hmm. Why don't we see the elephants building buildings? Okay, Why are we so unique? That's something interesting. And you see 
through the skeletal remains of our early ancestors that there is a progression going on here. So it's almost you're as kind if, of swaying me under your side at this point, man. You're getting me a little. You're getting me thinking too much. But this is the part that's this is the part that has to be said so that you we have a better understanding is that once you see this progression of the of the human race progressing. You start to see humor, larger brain size. You start to see upright posture and this, that, and so forth. And that, in and of itself, is perfectly fine when you see the early humans. But all of a sudden, you get the anatomic. There's that missing part there that makes no sense. And you want to know what that missing part is going to be? What's that? Part two of this part show. Part two, ladies and gentlemen. Part gonna, two of this show. We're going to leave you with that cliffhanger. Right we're going to leave you with a little bit of cliffhanger, ladies and gentlemen, because we hit the 30-minute mark. So, this has been Unknown Territory Minisode number one with KVK and the man they call Dave. And always remember, there is unknown territory out there, still uncharted, that any of you can go look at. So we hope you enjoyed this show. Got to get something out to you. And have a good night. Thought I saw you jump the Utah train. But I could not say. I could not say.